We're excited to bring to you our worship service today. You'll be able to watch some praise and worship. And so just join with us in worshiping the Lord and then you'll learn from God's word the principles that are gonna transform your life. So sit back and enjoy the blessings that God has for you today.
the Lord. God is good. All the time, God is good. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9, we've been going over the words of our Lord as he shared with us the, the outline of a prayer that he wants us to pray. And he said we, we shouldn't be praying in, uh, in a way that we just make repetitions over and over again, but we should pour out of our heart to our God who is our loving dad, who is there to hear what's on our heart. And he says, I care about each aspect of your life. And so as he, as he tells us how to pray, he says to pray, and pray this prayer with me, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. So you see, as we come today, we come. And we're coming to the part of the prayer where he says, uh, Give us this day our daily bread. Hallelujah. You know what? God loves for you to come to him and to say, God... Here are my needs. Here's what's going on in my life. I know you've supplied all of my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But I come to you because I understand that you're my supplier. How many of you know that God is your source today? Hallelujah. God cares about your spirit, your soul, your body. God cares about you as a person. You know, Jesus, when he was teaching and he saw the people were hungry and, and, his, and he says, uh, well, let's give them something to eat. And they come to him and say, well, Lord, we, we don't have enough food. to feed. We, we, we don't have any food ourselves. And he said, but I, I go and find out how much food you got. And so they find a, a little boy with five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring that to me. And they're thinking, well, that's nothing. There's 5,000 besides women and children. This is nothing. How many of you know that with your appetite, that wouldn't go very far? I've been out to eat with some of you. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. The truth will set you free, brothers and sisters. Amen. Tell it like it is. But the Lord took and he began to break the bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And when he broke it, it began to multiply. Hallelujah. Lord, give me this day my daily bread. And Lord, you, when you touch it, it will multiply and I will be satisfied. Did you know when he fed the, all those people, the 5,000 and the women and children, that when he was done, there were 12 baskets left over? There's more than enough. How many of you know that God has more than enough? He's Jehovah Jireh. He's your provider. He is the one who will give you a table in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord, that table in the wilderness. Jesus, you know, he began to reflect and, and, and show the people what it meant when the children of Israel, think about it, they had come out of Egyptian bondage and they knew that they had their daily bread there because Pharaoh was going to make sure they had enough food to eat so they could keep making bricks for his projects. Now they get out of Pharaoh's care. And they go through the Red Sea. God delivers them from the Red Sea. But now they're out in the wilderness. They haven't had time to sow seeds. They hadn't had time to go and do all the things that it would require to feed all the people. But Moses had taken them out because he had faith in God. And he was walking by faith to the promised land. Oh, hallelujah. So here they are in the wilderness. And they have to depend on God. You see, sometimes we get in a place where we've got to depend on God. We can't depend on Pharaoh. We can't depend on the employer. We have to depend on God. He's our source. Amen. And so when we come to God, we come understanding that God can use different means. Well, God sent down manna from heaven. And it was enough for each day. He said, don't get any extra. He said, just get what you need for the day. Oh, hallelujah. 
And then before the Sabbath day, he said, now I'll give you enough for two days on the Friday. And he says, then when the Sabbath starts, you won't have to go and to get the bread. He said, that'll be your day of rest. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to know today that God has said, I want to meet your physical needs. I want to give you your daily bread. Hallelujah. And uh, the word in the Greek for daily here is, is a word that actually means a shopping list. Now, brethren, how many of you ever get your honeydew list, your shopping list from the wives? Now, Debbie used to just tell me the shopping list. She would give me the instructions and give me the list. And I would go to the store and I'd come back. Hey, darling, I got all the goodies for you. She said, where's my Mounds bars? No, I don't forget Mounds bars. <laughs> Where's the milk? Where's the eggs? I don't forget bacon either, do I, honey? Amen. I like that bacon. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The biscuit mix. I, I remember that biscuit mix. Amen. But praise the Lord. You see, the Lord, when he said this, he was talking about a, a list of needs. He said, bring your needs to your daddy God. Because he says, I love to hear what's on my children's heart. You know, isn't it great that like the Lord said, consider the birds of the air, they neither toil nor they spin. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed as one of these lily in the fields. And the, and the birds of the air don't have to go out and worry about there being a, a worm down there for them to get. God takes care of us. He said, if you being natural or evil or natural know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does your Father in heaven love to give good gifts to them that ask? He said, when you come to the Lord and you ask him for bread, is he going to give you a stone? Did you ever do that to your children? Hey, Dad, I need some bread. Well, here, here's your stone. No, I love to bless them. And then you, don't you love to see the expression on their face when... They're blessed. How many of you know you're blessed today? Amen. Given it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. Oh, hallelujah, the Lord will use all kind of things to meet your need. Hallelujah. And he cares about you, every part of you. Oh, praise the Lord. Aren't you glad that God makes a way when there is no way? Aren't you glad that God can prepare a table in the wilderness? The children of Israel found out that God was faithful. They didn't need Pharaoh. They didn't need Egypt. They didn't needed to go forward. I want you to know it's time that some of you leave Pharaoh, some of you leave Egypt and some of you begin to move towards the promised land where the land is flowing with milk and honey. I want you to know the Lord will give you everything that you need from dusk to dawn. Oh, I want you to know he's my God. He's my supplier. He is a, he is a refuge and a very present help in the time of need. Oh, hallelujah. How many of you know sometimes the, the way he's done it has astounded you? You've been in some situations. Some of you have been in between a rock and a hard place. Amen. Amen. Up in Chattanooga, they got the fat man squeeze. And there's these rocks, and you've got to squeeze your way through there. Some of you have been in some tough predicaments. Amen. Remember when I was a little boy, they had that swing, and that thing was swinging like this, and it was like, oh, man. I looked over the edge, and I thought, oh, Lord, help me now. It'll make you pray, won't it? <laughs> Amen. You get on a plane, and you start having engine problems, you'll do some praying. <laughs> Amen. Heard about a guy. He was on the plane, and it started having turbulence, and he said, Lord, he said he was a wealthy man. He said, I'll give you half of everything I've got if I can just feel that ground. And so he, he flew, and then the plane landed. And he prayed that prayer out loud, and there was a preacher behind him. Preacher came up to him. He said, oh, I'm, the man said, I'm so glad to be on solid ground. He said, the preacher come to him and said, well, I, I know the Lord heard, and I heard that prayer you said, that you'd get half of everything to the Lord if you just made it to land. And he said, well, you know what? I made even a better deal. If I get on a plane again, I'll give it all to him. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> 
But praise the Lord that He's with you when you're in the sky and He's with you when you're on the ground. Oh, hallelujah. He's with you when you're in the hospital. And he's with you when you're up on the top of the mountain. How many of you like to get on top of the mountains? I like to go to the mountains sometimes and just look out and look at all the leaves and the trees. And, and I look out and I think, wow, what a view. I remember when I was at the Grand Canyon, too, looking at a big old hole. And I thought, man, this is majestic. What a moment. And I was standing out there right near the edge, right at the edge. And I was just enjoying the moment. And it was so marvelous. And then all at once, I I thought, boy, I hope Debbie's not mad at me. <laughs> just take a, just a bump, and I would have been dying. But praise God, you didn't do it. Amen? Thank God for mercy. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread. He said, the Father knows you have need. He already knows everything, and he's working out a plan. See, here's the thing. We can't always see it in the natural we want to see it all. But how many of you know we walk by faith and not by sight? sight. So there's sometimes you're going through something and, and you're, you're walking by faith and you can't rely on your sight. But you, you know, <laughs> faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Oh, hallelujah. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Halle you know, hallelujah. I know I'm going to be rewarded because I'm diligently seeking him. Oh, hallelujah. There's not a doubt in my mind. I'm going to be blessed. Oh, hallelujah. When I wake up in the morning, I begin to thank him for every blessing. The main one that I know him personally. The main one that I can talk to him and I can tell him what's going on. Oh, hallelujah. I can bring my needs, my shopping list before the Lord and he never forgets anything. He knows how to take care of every need. Oh, he's the need supplier. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's the one that you can call upon and he loves to have you come to him. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Give him a hand clap of praise. I know I hear, hear some of you wanted to. You know, God loves to bless his children. Oh, he says, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those that ask? You know, Jesus said, now freely you have received. Freely. He said, did I have hold anything back? He freely gave to us, didn't he? Now freely give. The Bible says that when, when God has freely given to us the best thing, he said, why do we think he would withhold other things? He gave us his son. So he's already given me the best. Oh, hallelujah. And you know what? I, I rejoice, you know, I rejoice in the blessings of God when God begins to meet my need and work in my life in different ways. Oh, praise the Lord. You know, sometimes the devil says, well, you don't deserve that. And I said, no, I said, I don't. But thank God Jesus made the way. Thank God he is the reason that I can rejoice. He is the reason that I can be glad because I know him personally. And so the Lord begins to tell us, now therefore be careful for nothing. And, and Paul says it, be careful or anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace that passeth all understanding will flood your hearts and minds. Oh, I don't know about you, but I like peace. I begin to thank him for that peace. Jesus says to us, in the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The peace that I have, I now give unto you. My peace. So he's already given me his peace. So therefore, I don't need to worry about anything. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know what? <laughs> I love living without worry. Does anybody else love living without worry? Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't like worry. <laughs> Amen. See, I pray about it. I bring it to the Lord. And then I know that he's working. So then I can rest in his work. Hallelujah. So I don't have to keep thinking about it. Some of you are thinking about things too much. And you need to be turning it over. 
God's saying, I'm right here for you. The Bible says, casting all your care upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Just think about it. Just think about that rod and reel and just cast it. You don't have to carry it. Cast it. Just let's do that. Everybody just cast. On the, now, don't cast it on me. Cast it on him. Y'all got aim a little higher. Amen. I'm glad there wasn't no tomatoes in your hands. Glory to God. Or rocks. Amen. Hallelujah. But the Lord wants to take, he wants to take you into his care. Oh, hallelujah. You know, the church is the ministry of care. When somebody comes in these doors, they should feel the Lord cares for them and loves them. Oh, hallelujah. Not just spiritually, but emotionally, physically. Every part. God is your shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He restoreth my soul. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they do comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Oh, Oh, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, you prepare a table in the wilderness. Oh, hallelujah. I love to feast at the Lord's table physically and spiritually. I thought one time I said, I don't know if I'd rather preach or I'd rather eat, and I thought I'm going to do both. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't have to choose between them. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Because I know in whom I have believed. Does anybody know who you believe today? He's your God. He's your supplier. Oh, He loves to just bless you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Oh, hallelujah. Now, some of you have been working overtime and you're enjoying the money, but you're saying, Lord, I need some time off. He's blessing you with that extra income. And some of you, you're saying, but Lord, I need some time off. I, what I want is a paid vacation. Amen? Amen. Don't you appreciate a paid vacation? Not doing nothing, but the check's still coming. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. You see, the Lord loves to bless you and to meet your needs. You know, the church is here to minister to people's needs, physically, emotionally. You know, someone came in the other night and they just needed to feel the Lord's care. And through prayer, through care, the person, I know they had to feel the love of God. Embracing them. Through all the trials, you can always come to Jesus. It doesn't matter what you've done. You can come to Jesus. And when he works in your heart, oh, I want you to know it's a marvelous work, isn't it? Isn't it a glorious work? The Lord ministering to people. We are here as a lighthouse, Souls Harbor, to when a soul comes into this church, they know that there is a God who loves them and a God who is faithful and true and a church who will love them and put their arms around them. Praise God that you could be with us and share in our worship service. You know, God is wanting to do something marvelous in your life. His spirit has been sent so that we can enjoy a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. What you felt today is the Holy Spirit as he's drawing you to Jesus. Right now is an opportunity to receive him as your Lord and Savior. And so I wanna pray with you at this time. If you pray with me this prayer, you can know that you're gonna spend all eternity with Christ and with your loved ones that know the Lord. So let us pray. Father God, I thank you for sending Jesus into this world. 
And Lord, I know that you were willing to give your life for me. And I thank you, Christ, because you poured out your life. And now I can be forgiven. I can be set free. I can be delivered. I can be whole in Jesus' name. And I receive your blessing into my life. And I am now on a journey to follow you. I'm committing my life to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And I'm looking to you, Lord, to give me the direction that I need. You are going to be my shepherd. And Lord, I'm going to trust in you to take me from here and one day even into heaven. Thank you for this, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, there's nothing more wonderful than when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior and you know what it's like to have a personal relationship with God. And once you know Christ, then you understand that He cares about everything that you're going through in your life. And so today I want to take this opportunity to just pray with you whatever's on your heart right now. Father God, I just pray right now that you'll just minister to the need in this life. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that you are reaching out in your love. And Lord, you are embracing my brother or sister in Christ. And Lord, right now, the healing streams from heaven are flowing through them. And Lord, I thank you right now that you're working in their life. And Lord, if they're praying for a family member or a loved one, Lord Jesus, we commit it to you right now. We turn it over to you, Lord, and we know that our prayers are touching the heart of God. And Lord, even though we may not see in the physical, Lord, we know in the spiritual realm that you're ministering to that situation. And Lord, one of these days we'll see the physical manifestation and we give you the praise and the honor and the glory for all you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God for what he's doing in your life. And we're just excited that we can come and bring our broadcast to you. And so, uh, if you don't have a church home, we'd love for you to come out and be with us at the Souls Harbor Church at 451 West Helen Avenue in Punta Gorda, Florida. Come and be a part of our family. When you come in the doors, you're going to feel God's presence. You're going to feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit as we pray and minister to all the needs that are here in the congregation because you know what? Jesus cares about everything that's going on in your life. And so we just want to continue to pray God's richest blessings upon you. And whether it's at Souls Harbor or another church, we just pray that God will richly bless you and draw you closer to him in Jesus' name.